Hi guys, uh, this is the first video explaining Canva. The contents will be from introduction to summary. Here I have a quiz for you. What is the correct description? A negative Canva makes tire slip get bigger than positive Canva does in a turn. A negative Canva has more positive effect to tire wear compared with a positive Canva. A positive Canva has less slip than negative Canva does in a turn. Canva doesn't have any effect to tire wear. This is the front view of front left tire. The Canva is the tilt angle of the wheel from the vertical axis. The wheel has the positive Canva angle when the top of the wheel leans away uh, from the vehicle longitudinal axis, like in this picture. The vehicle longitudinal axis is around here. On the other hand, the wheel has the negative camber angle uh, when the top of the wheel uh, leans inwards uh, towards the vehicle longitudinal axis, uh, like in this picture. If you roll the circle uh, with the initial camber angle gamma on the flat surface, uh, the movement of the circle will follow the big circle described as two dotted train line. On the other hand, the straight line uh, perpendicularly passing through the center of circle surface uh, will meet the red point C uh, somewhere on the flat surface. Uh, let's imagine the cone uh, with point C as its apex and the small circle surface as its base. The rotation trace of the circle is exactly the same as that of cone. Two dotted chain line uh, represents the natural way of circle movement uh, with the camber angle gamma. As you can see in the picture, the natural movement of a circle uh, with a camber angle is not a straight line, uh, but a big circle described as a two-dotted chain line. Let's think about the straight movement of tire with a negative camber. A yellow color represents the front view of a front left tire with a negative camber angle gamma. I describe the tire as a yellow square shape. Uh, for clear explanation of camber effects. Assuming that the effect, effective rolling radius is R sub E here, uh, then the actual speed of a tire is the omega R sub E, uh, which is for point E. And also we have inner velocity for point I here, and outer velocity for point O here. Here we have a, a velocity value here. In the tire contact patch with a negative camber, inner radius is shorter and outer radius is bigger compared with the effective radius. Therefore, every velocity of the point of tire contact patch will be different in the laterally in this order here. Uh, but actually, all the speeds of the point I, E, and O are the same because the tire are rolling straight ahead regardless camber angle. Uh, therefore, uh, there should be some kind of slip mechanism uh, so that uh, all the points of tire uh, keep the same velocity. A point I of inner edge with its radius r sub i uh, has to get faster to catch up with actual speed omega r sub e. Uh, but it cannot get faster uh, because of a smaller radius uh, than the effective rolling radius r sub e. On the other hand, outer edge has to get slower uh, to keep pace with the actual speed omega r sub e. Uh, but it cannot get slower uh, because of larger radius 
uh, then the effective rolling radius r sub v. Therefore, there will be the fourth slip in the inner region of a tire uh, from the midline, and the backward slip in the outer region of a tire. At the bottom of the right corner in the picture, uh, the green arrow describes the uh, relative size of a required slip along the lateral line of a tire contact patch to catch up with the actual speed developed by the effective rolling radius R sub e. In this picture, inner region from the midpoint has the forward slip and the outer region has the backward slip as I explained before. Uh, this picture is also exaggerated uh, to clearly explain the forward slip and the backward slip uh, per the negative camber of a front left tire. A uh, left picture uh, shows the forward slip uh, for inner circumference deformation, uh, which is similar to uh, brake slip. And the right picture uh, shows the backward slip uh, for outer circumference deformation which is similar to traction slip. Uh, to minimize the tire wear, it is recom a recommended camber angle should be kept under 1.5 degrees for all the pos possible uh, suspension movements. A small negative camber angle is required to reduce the tire wear uh, during the vehicle cornering and to increase the tire grip. On the other hand, a positive camber angle decreases the tire grip and increases tire wear. Here we have a front view of front left tire. Uh, let's think about the longitudinal slip size uh, during right turn uh, for two types of camber, a negative and a positive. Uh, with the negative camber, uh, referring to the cone movement I explained, uh, the wheel uh, tends to bend to the same direction of a steering angle heading uh, because that is the natural way of tire movement uh, with the negative camber, as I explained. Uh, that means the direction due to camber and due to steering is the same. Uh, therefore, a tire slip size is reducing compared with that in the uh, straight path as shown in the left picture. On the other hand, uh, with the positive camber, the direction of a tire uh, tends to bend to the opposite uh, to the steering direction uh, because uh, that is the natural movement of a tire with a positive camber. Consequently, positive camber needs more steering wheel angle and produces a bigger slip size than negative camber does. Uh, that's why positive camber has a negative effect on tire wear and tire grip. Uh, this is the top view of tire to explain the lateral slip size. Uh, this is not the real deformation, uh, but the concept diagram. As always, uh, the picture are exaggerated for the clear explanation. Uh, in the negative camber, camber angle and the steering angle cooperate to each other. As in the picture, uh, both of camber and the steering have the same rotating direction here. Uh, when the steering angle gets bigger here, a camber doesn't change in this case. In the actual case, camber can have a different value uh, due to the change of suspension geometry and the tire load. In the positive camber, a camber angle hinders the vehicle steering. As in the picture, camber and the steering have the opposite rotating direction. Uh, therefore, steering angle should be bigger to overcome the positive camber angle uh, for the same curved path compared with in the case of a negative camber. Uh, when the steering angle gets bigger, camber doesn't change, but steering effect gets bigger. 
As in the picture, tire is experiencing a stretching force in the tire contact patch uh, because of different direction of camber and the steering. Consequently, uh, this gives the negative effect to the tire wear. The answer to the quiz is a negative camber has a positive effect to tire wear compared with a positive camber. Here we have a summary. Uh, the wheel uh, has the positive camber when the top of the wheel uh, leans away and has a negative camber in the opposite case. A tire with a camber has both of a forward slip and a backward slip uh, based on the midline. To minimize the tire wear, it is recommended a camber angle should be kept under 1.5 degrees for all the possible suspension movements. A small negative camber angle is required to reduce the tire wear and to increase the tire grip. Uh, in the negative camber, camber angle and steering angle cooperate with each other. In the positive camber, camber angle hinders vehicle steering. A positive camber uh, needs more steering wheel angle and produces a bigger slip size than negative camber does. Uh, that's why a positive camber has a negative effect on tire wear and the tire grip. If you watch the previous videos, you can easily understand upcoming videos. I explain the mechanical trail and the pneumatic trail and their interaction. Recently, I explained the effect of vehicle speed to pneumatic trail and the self-aligning moment. The next video will be the tire side slip part 9. I will explain the camber thrust. Uh, you can catch the brand new video uh, by free subscription. So, what are you waiting for? See you in next video. Goodbye, guys.